Hi there, thanks for tuning in to the Freedom Update. Today I want to tell you about a really important new case that is heading to the Supreme Court of Canada and we at the Canadian Constitution Foundation will be intervening. It's a landmark case about whether Indigenous governments are subject to charter scrutiny. I can't wait to tell you all about it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Christine and I'm the litigation director at the Canadian Constitution Foundation, a Canadian legal charity that fights for fundamental freedoms in Canada. I upload regular videos about our ongoing cases and about other interesting developments in constitutional law in Canada. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please hit like and subscribe below. It really helps my videos out a lot. And please remember that my videos are not legal advice. If you have your own legal question or problem, please consult your own lawyer. So the case that the Supreme Court of Canada is going to be hearing is called Dixon and Vuntut Gwich'in First Nation, or uh, VGFN as it's gonna be called uh, for short form. So the case involves an appeal of a Yukon Court of Appeal decision in a case brought by an Indigenous woman, Miss Cindy Dixon. Now, Miss Dixon is a member of Vuntut Vgwitchin First Nation, a small First Nation community located on territory in the far north of the Yukon. She had sought to stand for election to the council for VGFN. Now the council rejected her candidacy on the basis that if she was elected, she was not going to relocate to the settlement land, which is a fly-in community mostly comprised of Old Crow, which is approximately 800 kilometers to the north of Whitehorse. Now, like many members of VGFN, Miss Dixon lives in Whitehorse. She has a job in Whitehorse and her son is hypoglycemic and needs to be near a full service hospital, which Old Crow does not have. For these reasons, as well as other socioeconomic reasons, Miss Dixon is not willing to relocate to Old Crow, but the VGFN constitution contains a requirement that any member of their council must reside on the settlement land, which is effectively in Old Crow and an individual who does not already reside in the settlement land must relocate within 14 days of election day. The council rejected her candidacy on the basis that she would not relocate, and she brought a section 15 charter claim for discrimination. Now it's important to know that the Supreme Court has held in an earlier case called Corbier that Aboriginality residents, as it pertains to whether an Aboriginal band member lives on or off reserved, is considered an analogous ground for the purposes of section 15 of the charter. The lower court found that Ms. Dixon's charter rights were not breached and that even if they were, her claim was precluded by section 25 of the charter. The Court of Appeal found that there was a charter violation, but that it could not be remedied because of Section 25 of the Charter. In other words, this self-governing First Nation was shielded from charter scrutiny. The Canadian Constitution Foundation has been granted leave to intervene on the issue of the scope of Section 25 of the Charter and how this provision's guarantee of rights for Indigenous people interacts with the Charter. Now, Section 25 is a section of the Charter you might not be familiar with. It does not have a whole lot of judicial scrutiny. It's actually received very little judicial interpretation. It says that the guarantee in this Charter of certain rights and freedoms shall not be construed so as to abrogate or derogate from any Aboriginal treaty or other rights or freedoms that pertain to Aboriginal peoples in Canada. So because this provision has received so little interpretation, this case is an excellent opportunity for the court to clarify the scope of these Indigenous rights guarantees and how they interact with other rights guaranteed by the Charter. And we at the CCF are going to argue that the Charter should be applied broadly. In this intervention, we're going to be arguing that the purpose of Section 25, when read in context, is to ensure that the Charter is not used as a sword by non-Indigenous peoples to deny the special status or a benefit for Indigenous peoples. It's primarily concerned with precluding Section 15 claims by non-Indigenous people. Its purpose is not to shield all Indigenous government conduct from Charter scrutiny. We'll instead argue that Section 25 is intended to recognize that beyond the Charter, Indigenous peoples have additional rights. In that sense, it's akin to Section 26 of the Charter, which recognizes the possibility of other rights beyond those entrenched in the Charter. We'll argue that Section 25 does not deprive an Indigenous person, like Miss Dixon, 
from making a charter claim against an Indigenous government or indeed against any other government. We're really looking forward to providing a perspective on the development of the law in Section 25 and advocating for the broad application of charter guaranteed rights and freedoms for all people. If you want to learn more about this case, including when a hearing date is set and how you can watch the hearing, you can sign up for our email freedom updates at the ccf.ca slash freedom updates. Okay, that's all for this update. Thanks for watching and let's keep fighting for freedom in Canada.